Where do Iranians really come from? For centuries, this has been one of the biggest questions in the Middle East. Some say Iranians are the direct descendants of the ancient Persians. Others believe their roots go even deeper, reaching back to some of the earliest people who lived in West Asia. Now for the first time, DNA is giving us real answers. And what scientists have found is surprising. So stay with me until the end, because we're about to explore the hidden truths of Iranian DNA. And before we dive in, let me ask you a question. Do you think modern Iranians are the closest descendants of the ancient Persians? Drop your answer in the comments. Before we jump into the science, there's something important you need to know. Most of what people believe about Iranian origins comes from legends, school textbooks, or national myths. But when scientists began studying the DNA of people across the Iranian plateau, the results did not always match the stories we grew up with. For example, many assume that modern Iranians came directly from the great Persian empires. Others believe their ancestry started with the arrival of Indo-Iranian tribes from the steppe. Some even argue that Iran's identity is built almost entirely on those ancient migrations. But the truth is more complex and surprising. Genetic research shows that a large part of Iranian ancestry comes from groups who lived in the region thousands of years before the first Persian kingdom existed. These early people are barely mentioned in history books. They had no famous kings. They left behind no grand monuments. Yet their DNA forms one of the deepest layers of Iranian identity. Another controversial point is the role of the Indo-Iranian tribes. Across social media, you'll find many debates about how much the steppe migrations shaped modern Iranians. Some claim they created the entire culture. Others insist they had almost no influence at all. But the data shows something different. The steppe tribes brought new languages and traditions, but their genetic impact was smaller than many expect. Most of Iran's ancestry was already in place long before they arrived. This means the story of Iranian origins is not about one people replacing another. It is about many groups mixing, adapting, and evolving together over thousands of years. And then there's another layer. Recent DNA studies reveal a strong ancient link between Iranians and populations from the Caucasus region. This connection is older than Persia, older than the Medes, and older than the steppe migrations. It suggests that early movement between these regions shaped Iranian ancestry in ways historians never fully understood. When most people think about the history of Iran, they picture great empires, famous kings, and the rise of Persian culture. But the story of Iranian DNA begins long before written history. The earliest known ancestors of modern Iranians were mountain hunter-gatherers who lived in the Zagros region nearly 10,000 years ago. They depended on wild goats, seasonal plants, and small streams running through the rocky slopes. Their lifestyle was simple, but they were among the first groups on earth to experiment with early forms of farming. Another group lived in the lowlands of southern Iran. They were early farmers who raised animals, grew grains, and built small clay houses. They developed their own traditions over centuries. They had different origins from the mountain tribes, Yet over time the two groups met, traded, and mixed. There were also communities living along the Caspian Sea in dense forests. They adapted to fishing, gathering fruits, and hunting. They lived separately for long periods, which allowed their genetic patterns to stay unique. These early populations rarely appear in common history books. They left behind no written records and no famous monuments. Yet, modern DNA studies show that these forgotten tribes shaped a large part of the genetic structure we see in Iran today. They carry the oldest layers of ancestry that have survived through every era, every invasion, and every cultural transformation. One of the most surprising discoveries from modern genetic science is that Iranian DNA is not based on a single ancient origin. Instead, it is a blend of several deep ancestral worlds. The first layer comes from the mountain groups who lived in the Zagros region. The second layer comes from early farmers in the lowlands. Later waves brought new influences from the Caucasus in the northwest, Mesopotamia in the west, and early South Asian groups across the eastern borders. 
These migrations did not happen at the same time. They came in waves, separated by thousands of years. For most of human history, the Iranian plateau acted like a crossroads. People from nearby regions traveled through it, settled in it, or mixed with communities already living there. This long series of movements created a genetic landscape that is more layered than many people expect. Around 4,000 years ago, a major shift happened. A new group entered the Iranian world. These were the Indo-Iranian tribes who came from the grasslands of Central Asia. They traveled with horses, cattle, and simple wagons. They brought with them a new language and a new set of spiritual traditions. These tribes lived by herding animals and moving across large distances in search of fresh grass. They carried oral traditions, stories about gods and heroes, and rituals centered on fire. When they reached the Iranian plateau, they settled among local populations and slowly influenced the region. Many people imagine that these steppe tribes replaced earlier groups. But the truth is different. Their genetic contribution was important, but it was not the majority. They brought strong cultural influence, especially language and religion, but they did not erase the older genetic foundations. Most modern Iranians carry only a modest amount of steppe ancestry. Yet the languages spoken in Iran today, such as Persian and Kurdish, trace back to these Indo-Iranian arrivals. It is one of the best examples in history where a culture left a deeper impact than its DNA. This mix between older Iranian populations and incoming steppe tribes marked the beginning of a new era. It created the early Indo-Iranian world that would later give rise to well-known civilizations. Before the Indo-Iranian tribes arrived, there was already a powerful civilization in southwestern Iran. The Elamites. They lived in cities, built temples, developed writing, and interacted with ancient Mesopotamia. Their culture was completely different from the steppe world. Their language had no known connection to Persian. When the Indo-Iranian tribes settled on the plateau, these two communities eventually crossed paths. They lived in different regions at first, but over time, political changes, trade networks, and shared borders brought them together. The Elamites contributed one set of traditions, knowledge, and ancestry. The Indo-Iranian groups brought another. Over the next few centuries, these populations mixed through marriage, migration, and alliances. This blending was not sudden. It happened slowly, over generations. Modern DNA shows signs of both groups in the Iranian population. The Elamite influence appears in genetic markers linked to ancient southwestern Iran. The Indo-Iranian influence appears in markers linked to the steppe. Together, they helped create the base of what we now think of as Iranian identity. This joining of worlds set the stage for future kingdoms. It shaped the early culture from which larger empires would rise. As history progressed, Iran became home to a series of influential empires. Each empire added new populations and new genetic threads. The Median Empire brought together many tribes under a single political structure. Their rule helped unify different regions that had once been separate. The Achaemenid Empire, founded by Cyrus the Great, stretched from the Mediterranean to India. It connected dozens of cultures. People moved across the empire for work, trade, or military service. Craftsmen, soldiers, scholars, and administrators from different regions settled in Persian cities. Some married into local families. This movement added new diversity to Iranian DNA. The Parthian Empire brought influences from Central Asia. Their rulers had steppe ancestry, and their soldiers moved across wide territories. Their presence left a genetic trace that still appears in some Iranian groups today. The Sasanian Empire continued this pattern. It linked Iran with Arabia, the Caucasus, Central Asia, and parts of South Asia. People from these regions interacted more than ever before. Some settled permanently, creating new communities that blended with older populations. Across more than a thousand years, these empires did not replace earlier ancestry. Instead, they added new layers on top of the ancient foundation. The basic structure of Iranian DNA remained surprisingly stable even as each era introduced new people into the region. 
One of the most surprising findings in Iranian DNA research is the strong genetic connection to ancient groups from the Caucasus region. This influence is older than many people assume. It does not come only from recent history or from known kingdoms. It began thousands of years earlier, during a time when farming communities were spreading across West Asia. Early groups from the Caucasus traveled south into the Iranian plateau. They brought their own traditions, tools, and knowledge of agriculture. These movements happened slowly, across many generations. There were no large invasions. Instead, families and small communities moved into new areas, settled near local groups, and joined existing networks of trade and marriage. Over time, the ancestry of these Caucasus groups blended with the older Iranian populations who had lived in the region since the Stone Age. Modern DNA studies show that this influence became a stable part of Iranian genetics. It is one of the reasons why the genetic profile of Iran looks different from neighboring regions such as Arabia or Central Asia. When the Achaemenid Empire emerged, it became one of the largest empires the world had ever seen. It stretched across three continents and linked more than 30 cultures. This wide network did not only shape trade, language, and politics. It also affected the genetic landscape of Iran in small but meaningful ways. People moved freely across the empire for work, trade, military service, and administration. Craftsmen from Anatolia worked in Persian cities. Soldiers from Central Asia served in the Imperial Army. Scholars from Mesopotamia lived in new settlements. Traders traveled along long routes that connected Egypt, the Persian Gulf, and northern India. Most of these movements did not change Iranian genetics in a dramatic way. They did not replace earlier populations. Instead, they introduced new threads into the existing mix. These threads came from a wide range of regions. Some came from the eastern Mediterranean. Others came from Central Asia, North Africa, or the southern Arabian coast. This pattern continued under later empires. The Parthians maintained connections with Central Asia. The Sasanians created strong ties with the Caucasus and South Asia. Different groups entered and left the region over centuries. Some settled permanently. Others stayed for a short time. Today, Iranian DNA tells a long and layered story. It shows that the population is not the result of one migration or one ancient tribe. Instead, it reflects many different groups who lived, moved, and mixed across the region for thousands of years. The history of Iran itself, from ancient settlers and mountain tribes to Persian empires, steppe migrants, and global connections, has left a lasting mark on the Iranian genetic code. If you've enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of Iran, let us know in the comments. Have you taken a DNA test and discovered any Iranian roots? Or maybe you've always wondered about the origins of your family's traditions, language, or regional identity. Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and Koda Hafez. Goodbye for now.